Subscribe for more true horror stories. I'm 22 years old, fresh out of college, and I recently got a job at my old high school as a sort of computer intern in the school basement. The basement of the school is very messy and disorganized, but there is a small three-person office that's actually very nice down there. It has three nice big desks, two mini fridges, a flat screen TV mounted on the wall, and satisfying air conditioning, a luxury the students and teachers cannot enjoy in the school. And of course, all the school servers and other computer related stuff. I got the job because three of my old computer teachers flat out adored me. I could actually consider them as real friends, not just teacher figures. So they all helped tremendously in landing me this job. It's been great until something happened a few weeks ago. My two co-workers who share the office with me, Dave and Gary, weren't in the office at the time. They were upstairs working on papers or whatever. I was eating my sandwich during my lunch break when I got a phone call from one of the women in the front office telling me that the school was on lockdown and that somebody possibly armed had entered the school. There wasn't much that I could do other than turn off the lights because surprisingly, as nice as this little office was, it didn't have an actual door to it, just a big opening. And the door to the whole basement didn't even have a working lock. For my own safety, I turned off all the lights in the office and my computer screen. I kept my phone on the desk, texting both Gary and Dave, but they wouldn't respond. I sat down there in the dark, playing games on my phone for like 20 minutes, waiting for the call from up front to tell me to resume working. I had no idea what was happening. I couldn't hear what was going on upstairs from down here, but I was not allowed to make any calls until I was informed that the lockdown was over. Then. The noisy basement door opened as the creaking echoed across the basement and into my office. I sat up from my seat, wondering if I should call out Gary or Dave. I was eager to get some info from them. Someone then came running down the stairs, and their footsteps were approaching my office. I pushed away my chair and crawled under my desk. Somebody entered the office but did not turn on the lights. There was just silence. I can't even describe the fear I was experiencing. I felt like if I made one sudden noise, I'd be a dead man. Suddenly my phone dinged as I got a text message. I felt my entire world shrivel up and die at that one moment as I clenched my teeth in fear. Footsteps suddenly moved closer to me until I finally dug out from under the desk in capitulation, begging whoever it was not to kill me. And just then, someone grabbed my arm and pulled me up. It was some guy in a red plaid button-up, jeans, and a reddish black cap. He told me, It's okay. I'm just down here hiding with you. What's going on up there? I whispered to him. He kind of ignored my question and asked me if there's an exit down here. I told him, yeah, around that way. Before he could do anything else, I asked him, who are you? There was a brief moment of silence before he started explaining. He was coming in to pick up his son when a teacher told him to hide. After his explanation, I checked my phone and saw that the text I received was from Dave. It said, dude, this is underscore underscore crazy some guy with a gunshot mr buckley he's wearing a red shirt and a hat whatever you do don't come upstairs i was about to reread that text out loud to the man until i realized i looked up and felt my stomach sink the man seemed to catch on to my suspicious stare panicking all i could think to do was to run upstairs a gunshot echoed through the basement and i could hear the bullet ricochet off something metal in the darkness but thank god that bullet missed me and i made it upstairs Fortunately, police were waiting at all exits, including the basement exit, and they apprehended the man the second he opened the door. More good news, our teacher, Mr. Buckley, survived the gunshot. It was later determined that the man and Mr. Buckley had some beef for whatever reason, but that was never revealed. All we know is that Mr. Buckley couldn't have done anything that would have warranted this kind of reaction. And I know that the sound of that gunshot will forever echo in my mind. My school has two lunch periods. The first lunch period is for all 6th graders and some 7th graders. The second lunch period is for the other half of the 7th graders and all 8th graders. The lockdown happened in the beginning of October. On the day the lockdown occurred, it was overcast and rainy. During the first lunch period, I heard four loud booms. Personally, I thought it was thunder, but the entire lunch crowd started screaming. I thought those kids were just overreacting. But then campus security came in and started yelling at people to go into the multi-purpose room. The kids who were in line buying lunch had to throw out their lunch and come inside. My friends and I went inside the room along with a huge group of other kids. 
Everyone was curious as to what was happening. Our multi-purpose room is huge, and the back wall of the room is made of see-through glass. When my friends and I were rushed inside, campus security covered the glass with curtains, and there were adults stationed at every exit. My friend Eric was curious as well, so he asked one of the adults what was going on. When he came back, he said, You know how right in front of TMS there are those houses? I replied, Yeah. He continued, There's this mentally disabled crazy man who barricaded himself in front of his house, and he's threatening to commit suicide and kill the cops if he's evicted. He was walking around outside of school watching kids in a weird way. Eric told us that it turned out the man was also a registered sex offender, making matters worse. We were stuck in the multi-purpose room for a whole hour, taking up two periods. After the whole thing was settled, we were escorted to our classrooms one by one. I later found out that the man lives next to my friend Brandy, who told me about a previous Halloween when she saw the same man at his window cutting his arm and writing in his own blood, don't come here or I'll kill you. Of course, being Halloween, people, including Brandy, assumed it was just for the holiday. But after this horrific incident, we knew this man was mentally unstable, and we were glad he never got near us. It was a typical boring day in calculus. Only it was Friday, seventh period, meaning the week was almost over, and spring break would finally be upon us. So, everybody was getting antsy in their seats. I could tell we didn't have a test that day, like a lot of my friends did with their other teachers. Our teacher in the middle of class just decided to start playing games with us on Sparkle Calm. He was a very laid-back teacher like that. As we were doing some brand logo quiz on Sparkle, I remember the exact moment it happened. Right after my friend answered a question, I remember the exact answer was Adidas. The dean's voice came through the loudspeaker. He sounded panicked and frantic as he told all the teachers, this is not a drill, go into lockdown. I actually got chills and goosebumps on my arms. Even our usually laid back teacher seemed panicked as he ran to turn off the lights and ushered us to the back corner of the room. We all sat in silence for about two minutes, and then the usual buzzing that came from a panel in the back of the room ceased, indicating that the school must have cut all the power. We all looked at each other, realizing this must be serious. A few more minutes of waiting later, we heard a man screaming at the top of his lungs coming down the hallway. Two girls in the class actually started crying, which made all of us even more scared. As the screaming got closer to the classroom, the lunatic-sounding man started banging on the lockers while screaming, I'll kill all of you! It was at that moment that I started to fear for my life. My teacher shushed us as we all looked at each other to see our peers' reactions. The banging then moved from the lockers to our classroom door, and that's when one of the crying girls screamed, no! The banging on the door only grew worse as the man started screaming, Open up! Two of the girls in the class were crying out loud now. It felt like an eternity that the man was pounding at the door, but eventually he finally continued down the hallway, screaming like a mentally insane person, until we could not hear him anymore. I'd say ten minutes later, though it felt like half an hour given the situation, the dean came back on the loudspeaker, explaining the situation, which was surprising for him to do. He explained that some apparently mentally unstable person had entered the building and assaulted the woman sitting at the front desk, causing her to flee the building, screaming. The staff wasn't sure if the man was armed or not. Now this was before the school had cameras or could afford proper security, so the school was wide open to something like this happening. The staff had done a sweep of all the hallways and classrooms and couldn't find him. So the dean instructed the teachers to resume teaching, but to keep all the doors locked, and to not let any students leave for any reason. The most disturbing part, however, is that one of the janitors working the night shift found the man sleeping in one of the storage closets near the back end of the school. And according to rumors that were spread by my peers, sticking out of his pocket was a .44 Magnum. The janitor must have done something stupid to wake him up. For example, leaving the closet door open because by the time a police officer could arrive on the scene, the man was gone. My entire class, as far as I know to this day, has no idea if this man was ever found. But I like to think that right now, he's being given the proper help that he needs.